Welcome to this remote control basics video. In this video, we're going to be talking about sizing the components for something like a quadcopter. This was one of the requests that I got quite a lot when I asked for ideas for videos back at the beginning of October. So thank you to all the subscribers who came up with this. This video is for you. But before we get into the body of the video, let me say a very big thank you to these guys here, radioc.co.uk for sponsoring this episode. Radioc.co.uk is based here in the UK and provide very quick delivery to those of us in the European Union. They also offer very competitive prices, so if you're looking for any of the components that we're about to talk about, whether that's motors, ESCs, batteries, then this is a great place to have a look at. And also they offer ready-to-fly kits, so if you're interested in those drones where there's a minimum amount of effort to get in the air, it's also available from these guys too. Now this quadcopter in front of us is kind of a 260 class quad and this is the one that I tend to pull out of the bag every time I want to do a bit of quick and nasty FPVing. It's a great craft, it has survived crashes unbelievably well, it's very robust. It doesn't have the most sophisticated flight controller on it but it just flies and the only thing I've done is broken a few props including some unbreakable props which I'm quite proud of. But one of the things that commonly confuses those new builders, particularly those who aren't building a kit like this, this one actually was built out of a kit. It was a very handy thing to be able to do because for a first 250 class quad that I ever built, it was great to be able to have all the pieces sized correctly. But we're going to go through the process of theoretically sizing the motors, ESCs, and also the battery, and then trying to figure out how long that battery will last for any kind of multi-rotor. So we're going to go through this, it's going to be quite a bit of slideware, so apologies for that in advance, but I'll hopefully do it in a way that you can follow for your own particular instance. The first thing we need to do is establish how many amps the motors are going to pull. So the max amps. Now most motors will tell you how many amps you need, but trying to figure out which motor and propeller combination can be a bit tricky. And some of the detail we're going to go through was actually included in a video a while back about choosing a motor for your multi-rotor. So we're going to revisit it here, but we'll do it in a slightly more superficial way. So if you want to know more about it, have a look at that other video. Again, I'll put the link in the description. So we're going to have to figure out the total weight of the craft first because we need to know how much total thrust the motors need to provide in order for us to be able to hover in the air comfortably. Then we need to figure out how much thrust each of the individual motors needs to give us. So we need to divide that total thrust by the number of motors. That's typically going to be four on a quadcopter or six on a hexcopter or whatever. Then that when we know how much thrust we want from each motor, we can sit and start pouring through all of the specifications on places like Hobby King, Banggood, eBay, all the usual suspects, until we eventually find a motor that will give us that much thrust. And you're really looking for a motor with a max amps as low as is humanly possible. And then that will give you your amps. So let's actually go through a live example and let's actually go through this process for the model that we've just been looking at. Now the model itself with the battery is going to weigh about 600 grams. So you can assume that for a 250 class model it's going to weigh about this. That model also has FPV equipment on it as well as a Mobius and a mount. So 600 grams is a reasonable place to start. If you're going for a super lightweight quad it might be 150 grams less than that. If you're going to put gimbals and things on it then obviously you need to add that weight as well. But if we assume about 600 grams for a 250 class quad I'd assume about a kilogram for a 440 class quad and then moving up from there. So we need to figure out the total thrust. Now the total thrust I'd recommend that you multiply the weight of the model by about 2.2 that will give you a nice comfortable margin and allow it to hover about 50% throttle. So I'm looking for a total thrust from all my motors of about 1.452 grams or 1.45 kilograms. Now that seems like an awful lot, but that's the total thrust. We don't need each of the motors to be producing that because we have four motors on the quadcopter. We can divide that number by four and that means that what we're actually looking for are four motors that will each provide a thrust of at least 363 grams each. Great. Okay. 
that's the point where you jump onto the website and start pouring about. Now, two very classic choices these days for 250, 280, 260 class quads, um, down even down to the 180 classes. There are two really. One is the one we're going to look at here, which is the 2204 2300 kV motor, and there's also an 1806 2300 class motor as well, and both of those are very common choices with either 5 or 6 inch props with varying degrees of pitch. Now, looking at those motors, you'll find that they all pull a similar amount of maximum amps, and that is about 11.5 amps, 11 to 11.5 amps each. So now we've been through that process, we know that for our craft of about 600 grams weight, we're looking to have about 11 to 11.5 amps being pulled at full throttle on each of the arms. So here's our quadcopter looking from the top. So now we know that one of our motors is going to be pulling 11 to 11 and a half amps at full throttle. So we need to size the rest of the system in order to support that. So of course, the first thing we need to do is we need to add a lot more motors. So there we are, we now have four. Each of them are going to pull 11.5 amps. Now we need to size a speed controller to run each of those motors and you always size a speed controller so it's slightly more than the maximum amps that the motor can pull. So with these motors, we're looking at between 11 to 11 and a half amps maximum. We need ESCs that are probably going to be 12 amps or more. So we're going to push it and we're going to assume that we can get away with it. I normally wouldn't go this tight, but on these smaller quads, you seem to be able to get away with the tolerances better. So I'm actually gonna add an ESC to each of the arms, the maximum amps the ESC can handle is going to be 12 amps. So the ESC can provide more amps than the motor can pull. That means that any tolerances or any problems with the motors or the amps, maybe a bearing's getting a bit unhappy and the motor's trying to pull more amps than you expect, you've got a little bit of headroom in the speed controller. Now, when I first started building, I would add in about 20% headroom and if you're going to build a nice big hexcopter with expensive camera rigs underneath I'd still recommend give yourself 20% more amperage available via the ESC than you need to actually provide the motors. With this it's a bit close but we have got more amps in this ESC than the motors and actually that's what I've got on the quad that flies beautifully 12 amp ESCs. But again we need four of those, so we need to add one of those to each of the arms. So we need a battery that can supply four lots of 12 amps at the same time. So we need a battery that can provide 48 amps or more. So now we started off with the weight of our craft, how much it's gonna weigh, we figured out the kind of motors and props, the maximum amps of the motors, the size of the ESCs, and also we're now looking for a LiPo that's gonna deliver us more than 48 amps maximum amperage. So to figure out the maximum amperage that this battery could actually provide, we need to multiply the milliamp hour rating of the battery by its C rating. Now this battery that we're using is a 2200 milliamp hour pack and it's got a 25 C rating. So we multiply 2200 by 25 and that tells us the pack maximum amps it can deliver is 55 amps. That's brilliant, miles more than the 48 we need to supply each of the ESCs, that's a nice bit of headroom. Now a 2200 milliamp hour pack, it won't be run by FPV racers, they only want to run for five or six minutes and they want to run flat out. So typically what we'll do is they'll use a smaller battery size, maybe a 13 or 1400 milliamp hour, but they'll use one with a much higher C rating. So as you multiply the C rating and the milliamp hour rating, you still get more than 48 amps. We can pull about 80% of the LiPo's available power before we start to do damage. So you can't pull all of the 2200 milliamp hours out of the pack, we need to pull a little bit less. So the first thing we need to do to figure out how long the battery is going to last is figure out what 80% of that capacity looks like. So we multiply 2200 by 80% and we get 1760 milliamp hours. Now let's convert that to amp hours and that's 1.76 amp hours. It just keeps everything amps so we don't get mixed up with our different milliamps and amps. 
Now the next part's a bit tricky. Some of the really good motor manufacturers will kind of give you lots of specs about not only the maximum amps, but things like 50% throttle, hover throttle, and other bits and pieces as well. I happen to know that for the motors that we're looking at, it's about two and a half amps each is a nice comfortable hover throttle for this model. So I'm pulling about 10 amps in total because we have four lots of two and a half amps being pulled. So the way you figure out how long that battery is going to last is you can actually then divide the 1.76 amp hours that we figured out in the previous step. Divide that by the 10 amps that we need to pull, and that tells us that the battery will last 0.176 hours, which is about 10 and a half minutes. And that's pretty much spot on for what I found with this craft. I'll get about 10 minutes flight time, uh, being quite gentle and doing, you know, kind of soaring FPV flying. If I want to fly like a hooligan, then I can easily take off a couple of minutes on that because I'm pulling a lot more power as I'm managing the throttle and using um, a little bit more speed. Now there are online calculators that you can use. I'll put a link to one of them in the description. And if you go on there, so long as they have the details of the motors that you're looking at and the prop size, then they'll give you an idea of the flight time and the maximum efficiency and other bits as well. But this is a very quick and dirty way to give you an idea of how long it will last. So in the video, we started out at the very beginning looking at how heavy the actual craft was. Then we figured out the motor and props that we needed. That gave us the maximum apps for the motors. Then we sized our ESCs. Then we sized our battery. And then at the end, we used some simple maths with the battery capacity to make sure that we knew how much we could deliver and also give us a rough idea how long it would last in flight. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.